What's cracking guys? Here Mar Esoft here back with another video. This video is going to be really good. You will learn something today, especially if you take caffeine. And if you're like 9 out of 10 individuals, you take some sort of caffeine throughout the day. However, if your goal is to lift more weight, look better, and just overall be more of a badass, you're probably doing caffeine wrong. You see a lot of people supplement with caffeine to assist with lifting. And if you ask people, why do you take caffeine while you lift, you get a variety of different answers. Some people might say it helps with alertness, it prevents uh, being tired, other people would say it enhances my performance in the gym, and still other individuals would say it helps with my fat loss. So who's correct, who's not correct, and what amount should you be taking? Because I guarantee if there's 9 out of 10 people currently consuming caffeine on a daily basis, I'd probably say 9 out of 10 people are not taking the optimal amount of caffeine for themselves and for their goals. Enter Dr. Now Eric Helms, who will be giving a full in-depth overview of caffeine, what it really does, pros, cons, how to take it, and different recommendations. If you enjoy this video, because you're about to learn a lot today, make sure to like the damn video and let us know in the comment section below what you want to see Eric talk about next. We're very excited to be working with Eric on an upcoming Kaizen Nutrition Program. There'll be more information about that stay tuned but it's going to be amazing i'm very excited to work with one of the honestly pioneers in the fitness industry in the last eight years when it comes to natural bodybuilding flexible dieting programming he coaches bryce lewis who just won ipf worlds so some really cool stuff and make sure lastly to follow him on social media but without further ado let's really get into what is caffeine what does it do and what is the amount you should really be taking What's going on everybody, Eric Helms here from 3D Muscle Journey. Once again, thank you Omar for having me on the channel. Today I'm here to drop a little science on you about caffeine. So as you probably know, because you're probably in, in among the 9 out of 10 people in the United States or worldwide who actually consumes caffeine in one form or another, caffeine is ubiquitous in its use uh, among people, uh, regardless of what country, regardless of what ethnicity, or regardless of your gender or sex, you're probably taking caffeine in some form. Now, if you're taking caffeine for the purposes of lifting weights, there are some important things you should know about it. So first of all, we need to talk about how does caffeine work? So caffeine works as an er ergogenic aid in a number of ways. Uh, it's primarily just thought of as a stimulant. It is that, but the way it creates stimulation is through a few pathways and it also has some other effects. So first off, um, caffeine blocks adenosine. Uh, adenosine, in, when it binds to receptors in our brains, creates tiredness, among other things. Now, caffeine blocks uh, adenosine from binding in the brain at two different receptor sites. Uh, the first receptor site is how it suppresses tiredness. So when adenosine binds to this receptor site, you feel a little more tired. Caffeine prevents that from happening, so it basically prevents you feeling tired. Uh, the second receptor site that caffeine blocks adenosine from binding to, uh, the result of that causes euphoria and stimulation. So through those two effects, uh, there are some interesting impacts on how you perceive exercise. This typically lowers your perceived exertion and also reduces pain that you experience while exercising. So that's one pathway to which caffeine can improve performance. The second one is metabolic. Uh, when we study people who are taking caffeine, we find that their adrenaline output is increased. So their catecholamine output's up, noradrenaline and adrenaline are up. This results in more free fatty acids being used for fuel, which results in more glycogen being spared, which can extend your performance during uh, endurance type events. So it can affect aerobic performance. And then finally, and this is quite interesting, uh, caffeine seems to have some local effects at the muscular level, uh, either by most likely by enhancing calcium mobilization in the sarcoplasmic reticulum, which is the fancy way of saying that it improves contractile force, we can get an improvement in lifting performance or at least uh, contractions, the actual muscular strength component. So through a combination of all these effects, lowering perceived exertion and pain, uh, changing fuel utilization so that you can extend your, your, your endurance performance a little more, and also enhancing the actual contractile force at the local level, we see consistent improvements in performance. For all the lifters out there, what this typically translates to is being able to do more and uh, more reps in a given load. So like your AMRAP, your AMRAP might be improved, uh, you might be able to do more volume, and then less consistently we see an improvement in strength. It is there, but it's not huge, and it's not as always consistently shown. 
So that means that caffeine can be a useful ergogenic aid if your goal is to lift more weights or lift heavier weights. So that's hypertrophy through the accumulation of volume or strength if you're just trying to get an acute benefit to lifting. Now, I've got good news and bad, for, bad news for you. Uh, the more caffeine you take, the more you develop a tolerance, and some, but not all of the effects of caffeine, do become diminished over time until you have like a washout period, experience a little bit of withdrawal, and then go back on it. Because caffeine is indeed a drug, and that's how most drugs work. So, that's the bad news. The good news is that many of the effects that uh, we want as lifters don't diminish with, uh, with tolerance. So the effect on that A2A receptor site uh, that provides that stimulation and euphoria, that does fade with time. And if you think about this just from your experience, the first time you drank a cup of coffee or the first time you had caffeine, wow, you probably felt pretty jazzed, it might have enhanced your mood, you might have felt pretty stimulated, but then over time that effect kind of diminished as you kept drinking coffee or having pre-workouts, etc. However, what you probably have noticed is that if you were feeling tired and you had a cup of coffee, if you were feeling tired or you had a pre-workout, you wouldn't feel tired anymore, even though you might not get that stimulation. So the A1 receptor side effects remain. That doesn't go away, so it does suppress tiredness, which is, can be very useful if uh, you know, you're feeling pretty beat up before you go into a workout or if you didn't get much sleep last night or maybe you're, you're dieting and you just feel general fatigue. That can be nice, but that pure stimulation is not quite there. The other good news is that it seems that the local muscular effects don't go away uh, with habituation to caffeine. So even if you regularly take it, you're still going to get that effect. Uh, we've seen studies where they would actually electrically shock the muscle uh, and it still seems to produce a little more force even though someone has been taking caffeine for a while. So that's good news. And there are also studies showing that the perception of effort and the perception of pain uh, remain improved, or, or I should say reduced, uh, even in people who have been taking caffeine habitually. So the good news is yes, some of the uh, effects are going to go away with regular caffeine use, but the good news is that many of the ones we care about as lifters are going to remain. Now, the final thing we need to talk about with caffeine is how do you take it and what dosage? Now, if you look at most pre-workout supplements, you're going to see a dosage of about 200 milligrams. Sometimes if you see a more aggressive pre-workout supplement, it'll be around 300 milligrams. And most caffeine tablets are either 100 or 200 milligram tablets. So that means most people are taking between 100 to 300 milligrams before they train. But believe it or not, to get the full beneficial effects for strength improvement and uh, volume improvement in training, typically a dosage between four to six milligrams per kg is required to consistently get that beneficial effect. So what that means is if you weigh about 80 kilos or roughly 175 pounds, you've got to take between 320 to 480 milligrams of caffeine, meaning that even the high dosed pre-workout supplements aren't even reaching this mark. Now, does that mean you should go out there and start double scooping all of your, your pre-workout supplements? No, because there are some important things to consider. Everyone seems to have an individual level of tolerance to caffeine and that if you take too much at once that you're not accustomed to, there can be negative side effects such as GI distress, uh, anxiety, feeling jittery, and this can actually degrade performance if you're not used to it. So you should always assess your individual tolerance and take only the amount you need to feel that stimulation. You may need a lot less than the standard dosage used or the standard dosage used in studies may be so much that there are negative effects that aren't worth any potential performance enhancing effect. One really important one you have to consider is the effect on sleep. The half-life for caffeine is somewhere between four to six hours. Half-life means that the amount you take in that period of time will still be in your system, but half of it. So if you had 300 milligrams at say noon, that means five hours later, you would have 150 milligrams in your system. Another five hours later, down to 75 milligrams. So you have to think about your dosing relative to when you want to go to sleep. So for this reason, especially if you're taking the kind of dosage that would uh, be required to get a consistent performance enhancing effect for lifting, say four to six milligrams per kg, I would recommend not taking that any later than the early afternoon, somewhere between say noon to 2 p.m., uh, especially if you have an earlier bedtime because that can negatively affect your sleep, and sleep is way more important than, than the benefits you might get from one supplement. So to recap, caffeine has three pathways that can beneficially affect your performance. Stimulation at the, at the brain level, uh, metabolic effects that allow you to spare glycogen and use more free fatty acids from increasing adrenaline, and also local muscular effects that can improve contractile force. 
For the most part, this is going to improve endurance performance and improve the amount of volume you can do with lifting, something like an AMRAP, but it may have an effect on strength, especially at higher dosages. However, before you go out there and try four to six milligrams per kg, I would definitely recommend ramping up slowly, getting used to it, and seeing what level you can actually handle. And then finally, don't take it too close to your bedtime or it can negatively affect your sleep. So I'd recommend staying about at least eight hours from your bedtime before you take a dosage of caffeine that's that high. All right, so that's all I got for you. Good luck with your caffeine usage and good lifting to you. Omar, thanks for having me and I'll see you next time. Guys, that is the video. My thanks to Eric Helms for being on the channel. Make sure if you like this content to like the damn video and also to follow Eric on all his social media, which will be linked in the description, especially his Instagram where he has a very cool series uh, going over a lot of natural lifters before steroids. I'm talking Eugene Sandow, 1800s all the way into the early 1900s and the physiques really chronicling what's possible to be obtained as a natural individual. Check that out. I gotta get out of here. I gotta appear on a romance cover novel. I apologize guys. I'll see all of you, my rascals, in that next video. Peace!